everyone. I think I need to turn my music down. we doing just gonna hang out a little bit let people pop on and I am all ready to paint hello hello I like cleaned my desk I rarely clean my desk but it just I felt like it needed to happen I also redid the bun because it was a little um, shabby <laughs> Oh my gosh, why so late? Yeah, I'm a night owl. So are my children. So my mom duties don't stop until about 1030. And uh, so, yeah, I often come on late. <laughs> I also, like I went live um, this afternoon so I am not like, I know like most accounts, well, I don't know that statistic, but many accounts go live, um, you know, between like 7 and 10 p.m. And that is like my main like family time. So yeah, so that's why I'm always late. But we usually get a good crowd, so we'll see. I did just schedule this one today. Um, I'm also not really good at going live uh, at a consistent time because I got the kiddos and it's just really hard. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so tonight I am going to work on the best paper, in my opinion, which is Arches 600 GSM. Um, which is like a 300 pound paper. So I'm really excited. It's my last sheet. So, um, and I have a live succulent that I'm gonna start from. This is as far as I've planned tonight. So I have this little, little, little beauty here. And um, I'm gonna start there and we'll see what happens. And I also, did y'all see my new video? I just posted it like 20 minutes ago. I, um, I've talked about case for making watercolors a lot on this channel. Um, and I love my case for making. It's a handmade watercolor brand. And I, for Mother's Day, I got a whole bunch of new pigments and then they got lost in the mail. So it's been a long time coming, but I rebuilt a palette. So it was a pretty cool video to make um, where I tore apart a very well-loved, well-used palette and transferred it to a new vintage tin. So if you haven't seen that video, um, I highly recommend making some time to check that one out. And did y'all see I got the three minute function? So I've had the three minute thing on my other account for a while, but I don't go live on my wedding account. Like, uh, but I've had it over there for a while and I don't know why, um, but I got it. I don't know when I got it here, but I noticed it today. So, um, I did an impromptu video. I've been meaning to paint the prickly pear blooms. And so I did. So anyway, check that out too. Um, and I'm going to just start painting. Oh, I need to get my other device here because when I flip the camera, I want to be able to still see your comments. So of course this, no, it's not dead. Okay, good. So before I start, y'all, do you have any questions, anything you want to ask? I do have another account. It's The Momental. So my business name, my other business, my wedding business is um, Momental Designs. So my team and myself, we call ourselves The Momentals. So that is the name of that account. That account has actually been picking up some traction lately. Hey, Christina. Hello, hello, hello. Um, so that's been fun. I've been having some fun over there. Yeah. So. Sundown. Jenny doesn't need to know. 
like I said, you're free to go. Sorry, I'm trying to get my other um, device going here so I can see your comments as they come through as I paint and it's being, it's being weird. I'm playing a little music tonight. Um, hope y'all are okay with Hamilton. It's really low, so hopefully if you don't like Hamilton, you won't hear it. All right, up and running. How's that for surreal? It's so weird. <laughs> All right, if you're just hopping on, friends, I am painting on the good stuff tonight. I got my arches, 600 GSM. 300 pound arches, yeah. I've got my new case for making palette, which I'm super pumped about. Um, I've got a little baby succulent that I'm gonna start with and see where the mood takes me. And I'm feeling good, I'm not tired. I was, I was so tired last night when I went live. Oh my gosh, crazy. Anyway, I'm gonna flip it around and let's get painting. Be alive right now. Look around, look around. Okay. The greatest city in the world. The greatest city in the world. All right. Maybe I'll put the palette here. Let's see how that works, how that feels as I go. All right, friends, I've got the um, Art for Joy Sake brush collection in the house. Um, it These are my samples, so they're not all rose gold, but they're going to be. And I announced today in my afternoon live um, that my brushes shipped from the manufacturer today. So they are going to be here in about um, a week and a half. Now, there's a lot of work I have to do once they arrive. So, full disclosure. Um, you know, I've got to do a bunch of things on Amazon and, you know, get them shipped off to Amazon. Before all that, I have to get them. I have to inspect them because I've decided I had them shipped to me. Um, if you guys are new, if any of y'all are new here, um, just a really quick get you up to speed. Um... My name is Christy Rice, and I am obsessed with watercolor, and I have two businesses, Momental Designs. We create wedding invitations. I'm going to start sketching this succulent right now, and um, I have Paint Crush, which just went through a rebrand, right? How exciting. Many of you were involved in that and helping me rename and choose logos and all that kind of fun stuff, and so I have a little shop at ChristyRice.com where I... Uh, sell art prints and art making supplies. I have a line of handmade watercolors. Um, and in the very near future, I'm going to make this. I'm just going to keep going with this succulent. I love this type of suc succulent. I forget what it's called. Very common. This is like a hens and hen, hen and chicks, hens and chicks. Anyway, um, I love it because you can just keep going, right? You can just keep building that succulent out. Um, so in the very near future, I am launching a collection of watercolor paint brushes on Amazon Prime. And so that's what I'm talking about. So my brushes have shipped and I'm super jazzed about it. And when they get here, I'll inspect them and all the things. Um, I need to find out what I need to understand. I don't understand everything about the different marketplaces on Amazon, uh, meaning, you know, the different countries. Um, I don't know how pre-sales work on the Canadian um, um, Amazon. I, I, I need to I need to understand that more. And I think, honestly, my my publisher is going to be the best route for that all right here are the pigments 
I sprayed them down, but I need to spray them again. I'm using case for making tonight. Um, friends, if you didn't watch my, one of my newest, I posted quite a, quite a lot today, um, but I posted the whole process of, um, if you remember, my case for making pigments were in this tin. So I, I recorded the process of creating a new tin, which is now this tin. So it's really fun, actually. Really um, satisfying to recreate the palette. And so, yeah. I'm going in wet on dry. And you're gonna see me cycle through a bunch of different greens. This is kind of classic Christy. Even a little bit of yellow. Oh, that buttery yellow. It's an that's one of my newer, that's one of my new pigments. I'm really excited about it. Friends, off off camera, I have my painter's pot with the two areas, one for clean water, one for dirty, and I have a paper towel. So when you see me go off screen, I'm rinsing and or dabbing or both. A little pink. It has your book, but the days it's not available. Okay, interesting. Okay, cool. I will, um, I really need to look into that. Hmm. Love you till my dying day. Now I'm just pushing that color around. This this is a new color as well. It's like this super creamy, icy blue. I'm obsessed. Now I am gonna go ahead, once this is all, once I have the first layer on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch in a bigger one. Because I just feel like I need some scale tonight. Um, let me see. There's a glare on this. I'm gonna try to see if that's any better. Raise that up just a smidgey. Sorry y'all, when music's on, I have a hard time not singing. So you can tell me if it's annoying and I'll try my darndest to stop, but it's kind of instinctual. Okay, so, and don't forget, ask questions. All right, I'm just looking around. I'm gonna do a little bit of jade. Jade is so fun. I have, um, I literally have jade hanging all around me. And I have, it's all from one jade plant that I, I don't even know where I got it years ago. And jade is so interesting to me. I don't know, I'm not an expert on jade. Um, it's kind of hard to kill, which is, is great. Um, but I have some weird jade that is like doing some weird things. Like I have one jade plant that is kind of like a tree. You know, it has like a really big stalk or, or, or um, trunk, if you will. And then the, the jade that I have kind of right next to my head here that you can't see, that jade is very like vine-like it just shoots off into all these different magical little viney shapes. So um, I am always enamored with my jade. I know jade is kind of like in the succulent world, kind of like pedestrian, you know, everybody has jade. Not my jade, my jade's crazy town. Maybe somebody on this live knows more about jade and maybe, maybe that's kind of the nature of jade, but I, I don't know. I kind of thought it was more, um, yeah, there's different kinds of jade. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. So I must have some, some crazy jade because mine all is doing different things, but I swear it came from the same plant. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Let's do a little bit of side view jade up here. I'm literally like looking up at this plant and it's doing all different things right in front of my eyes. So it's really fun. Outnumbered out plan. Gonna take a whole out stand. Okay. 
Oh, okay, the one trailing may not be getting enough sun and it's trying to get light. Well, okay, so I, right? I would think that that, that would make sense, but the one that's trailing is trailing in all directions. You know what I mean? Uh, it's so weird. It's literally trailing in all directions. So I thought the same thing, but, um, but then I realized, well, wait. If it were just leaning in one direction, that that would be, you know, that would make sense. But anyway, like I said, I am no expert. I just like to have plants around. All right, I'm gonna use the half inch dagger. I'm gonna wet the page a little bit on this one just to play around with that technique. So it'll be a wet on wet eventually. My water isn't terribly clean. You know, I've, I'm known to paint with dirty water, but you know what? I'm not getting up right now to change this water. Mm -mm. All right, friends, so what have you been painting recently? What are you excited about? Maybe, is there something frustrating you in your painting journey? Did you pick up some new supplies? I wanna hear all about it. Um, when, will you, when will your brushes be available? So this is the million dollar question, and I talked a little bit about this earlier this afternoon in my live, but happy to go into it because it's, <laughs> Not an easy answer, sadly. All right, I'm just dabbing in color, and yes, I'm using that fluorescent because that's a new one in this palette and I'm obsessed with it. Don't be afraid of fluorescence, friends. You know, fluorescent, pure fluorescent is one thing, but when you start mixing your fluorescence with other colors, it basically takes an other, otherwise potentially dull painting and just adds some life and some zing. So am I going for like a fluorescent succulent here? No, but I want zing. I want a dynamic vibe. And so I use a lot of fluorescence in my paintings and you would never know it unless I told you, which I just did, I just told you. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going with this, um, I'm gonna go up into here and um, as I explain about the brushes. So the way that Amazon works for some sellers, I'm doing something called FBA with Amazon. Um, and just by the way, friends, if any of you have product ideas and you wanna pick my brain, just reach out to me. You can email me, I don't care. I am very passionate about product development and I'm also really passionate about the fact that now in the, in, the, in the era that we live in, in the time that we live in, now more than ever, the small guys like me, like you, we are the ones, we have so much power right now when it comes to the marketplace. And so if you have a product idea, you need to make it happen. And I can, I can kind of get you started on that journey because I'm really passionate about that. So anyway, I digress. But if you have something cool in mind that doesn't exist or something that you can make better, yeah, you need to do it. Anyway, the way FBA works. Um, oh, you're painting with me, Christina. I'm so excited. That makes me so happy. I love it. Um, okay, so the way it works is, you know, I developed the product. I had it manufactured. It's being shipped to me. I could have shipped it directly to Amazon, but I want to inspect everything first. And then once I am ready, I will prepare a shipment to Amazon's main like hub. They will receive it and then they will do a process of what's called checking it in. And basically what that means is they are sending off different quantities to all different warehouses all over the country, right? And during that time, I can't launch my product because there's not enough product or it, any product in stock potentially during that process. So 
when I when my product reaches Amazon, I will get an email that says we have received your product is here. We are checking it in and they will give me an estimated date. Typically, that date is very inflated and very far out in the future because they like to cover their butts. So there's no way for me to know an exact launch date, which is super strange, right? As a small business owner, like, and as, you know, if you're used to shopping from small businesses, you know that like, you know, marketing a launch date is so important, right? And talking about your official launch date is so important. Yes, I'm using fluorescent pink on this on the stem here. I know you probably think I'm insane, but trust me, these are just the initial layers. I plan for this painting to be one that I layer and layer and layer with a lot of detail. Um, I love when you guys talk amongst yourselves in the comments. That makes me so happy. I don't know why, but it does. It just gives me life that, that you are literally a community here and I just love it. So anyway, so I have an idea. I will likely launch sometime after the middle of August. It could be earlier than that and it could be later than that. But that is my best guess given all of the, the knowledge I have from past sellers and so on and so forth. So that was a very winded long answer to your question. So. Um, but I, I have to say, um, Penny, I absolutely become obsessed with painting supplies and purchasing them. So, um, yes, I'm, I'm going to jump in on that conversation because, uh, yeah. That boy's mouth. Oh my gosh, Hamilton. Can't handle it. Um, someone asked about my favorite house plants. I'm really bad at remembering all the names. I love string of pearls. Um, I have one string of pearls plant that's been going for about three or four years now. Um, in the past, I was really good at killing them. And I, no matter what I did, I couldn't keep a string of pearls. I have one right now that's that's going strong. Um, it needs to be transplanted. I'm afraid to transplant it because I've killed things in transplanting. So yeah, that's one of my favorite. Jade is another favorite of mine because I've just become really fascinated with the, the nature of Jade. As I mentioned earlier, I have, apparently I have a couple different varieties I didn't know about. And so I have all these Jade plants that have all these unique personalities that I love. So, um, I love Christmas cactus. Absolutely adore. I have one Christmas cactus that blooms like 10 times a year. She's a weirdo. I got her at Home Depot and she blooms. It feels like she's blooming all the time. She doesn't grow. She hasn't gotten very big, but she blooms. And then, um, I'm about to be gifted a Christmas cactus that's over 60 years old and she's huge. She blooms at Easter though. So she's more of like an Easter cactus, but so I love those spider plants. Big fan. I grew up with spider plants. My mom has um, given me a couple of hers. I love them so much. They're just so lovely and sprawling and lyrical. I love them hanging. Like I love hanging them inside. Um, yeah. So there's that. Um, what else do I have? That Oh, um, what are they called? Snake plants? I just find them really easy to care for. And I love how like bold they are visually. Yeah. Tucson Junker, junks, Junksters. I love that. I got some new pigments. I'm gonna try this weekend. Awesome, awesome. Ooh, new brushes with birthday money. Love it. Y'all are awesome. I'm going back into this initial succulent here and with some clean water, just kind of smoothing out, reshaping. Um, I had a few little spots that I had missed. So I'm doing that. I love aloe. As a matter of fact, I have a really cool aloe. I'm going to sketch her right now. 
get her in here. Run a flame, every pot of flame, this is not a game. I know I don't know what you mean, you forget yourself. Satellite, I never satisfied. Beneath is a job of Skyler. Where's your family from? Just you wait, just you wait. I do not name my plants. I know a lot of people do that and I, I've never done it. Yeah, I maybe it's because um, I tend to kill plants pretty easily. I don't know, maybe I'd feel guilty if I had named them. I don't know. <laughs> to be careful not to dip my side of my hand in what I just painted because I'm kind of working the opposite direction I should be because you know me. All right, so this is a new color. This is denim I think and it's highly granulating which means it's got a lot of the pigment particles still remaining um it is so granulating that it feels gritty so I am undecided on how I feel about this one um I've been playing around with it today and it's um it's a little unsettling to use but then when it dries, it's enchanting. So I don't know, I'll keep experimenting. Oh my gosh, a philodendron. Tell me what a philodendron is. Is that one of those like viney, leafy ones? Because I think I have one of those, if that's what that is. I'm so bad with the names. I'm adding some violet in here. Because this aloe, I'm actually, this is another plant that's kind of hanging right near me. It's one of the ones I don't put out for the, the growing season. It's just too tender and it tends to get like sunburnt really easily. Um, and this particular aloe is like this really like intense green. It's kind of like, like an army green almost. So I, I want to kind of communicate on the page that intensity and that like um almost the dinginess of the color but without letting it be dingy so i think violet little undertones of violet might be a really interesting way to go we'll see i don't know if any of that made any sense sometimes when i talk about art while i'm painting it's really weird it's like two different sides of my brain are enacted and it's interesting. Kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
I have one of those. It needs to be transplanted and I'm terrified. So tell me what I need to do to not kill it when I transplant it. Because I'm guessing if you've had it for 35 years, you've transplanted. <laughs> it, it needs to be or repotted. Let me rephrase myself here. Okay, I don't like the brightness on that. So I'm going to kind of wash away some of that, what I just did there. Smile more. I'll never understand you. Okay, I'm going with the granulating. Oh man, it's like sand. Ugh, I don't know how I feel. Oh, that's kind of pretty. Hey y'all, if you're just joining in, my name is Christy Rice and I am watercolor obsessed and I love this community here. I am painting some succulent houseplants that are literally, I'm surrounded by them as we speak. I started with this little guy. I'm using Arches 600 GSM watercolor paper, and I'm using Case for Making handmade watercolor pigments. It's a new palette of mine. So thanks for being here. I see a lot of new folks popping in and out. So just wanted to give a little reset to our evening here together. Thanks for being here. Don't overwater your plants. Dry is always better. Yeah. So think I I need that reminder. Um I've I think I finally figured out that lesson with all of my succulents. Um I, that was a hard one lesson. But um oh, you know what else I like? Peace lilies. I don't know why, but I love them. I have a huge one on my dining room table. The spruce. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you. little cactus I'm gonna let me see I'm gonna put her right here if you're wondering what I'm singing and you're just popping on I have Hamilton playing I am a um, big fan of all things Broadway. So I apologize in advance for my random interludes of singing. Mm. Yes, Hamilton is right. So good. Thanks for recommending the Academy Paper Block. It's very nice for kids. Isn't it gorgeous? Like, I'm telling you, I feel like if someone put down Academy cold press um, and I painted on that compared, like blindfolded, not blindfolded, but um, without seeing the labels and you gave me Academy and you gave me Arches 300 GSM, I don't know 
if I would quickly know the difference. Does that make sense? Like, I seriously don't know. That's how good it is. Good it is. Wow, I'm getting excited, so I'm skipping words. Um, yeah, Academy is just kind of wicked cool. Friends, we're talking about Academy watercolor paper. Let me pull one out. I've been recommending this. It's like my favorite um, watercolor paper, like affordable watercolor paper. It's really affordable. Um, and this is what it looks like. Don't forget. Oh, <laughs> don't forget the tiny point peeking out from behind the purple. <laughs> Your yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I totally forgot it. Now I got to figure out what color because everything started drying. Oh my gosh. You guys are awesome. Sorry, I don't like to say you guys. I'm working on that. All right, we're gonna start there and see. I did totally, 100% forget about that. This is a new one right here, Indigo. Oh, holy moly. I am a lover of Indigos. I kind of um, always, when I'm purchasing new pigments, if if they've got an Indigo, I'm, I'm buying it. I, I don't know what it is. Indigos are just, they're rich, but pigmented and just terribly exciting in a painting. Because when you when you water down indigo or wash it out, it it has such lovely qualities. But then like look, like I'm gonna get really intense down here. Like look at when you go with its intensity and you just let the intensity live and be. Oh, and then when you put fluorescence in a wet and wet with indigo, like I'm doing right now, it's like magic like cool things happen. I'm telling you, it's incredible. Yeah. Who is right? Yeah. I know. I'm getting really excited. <laughs> so friends, this is a style of painting. This is kind of my natural style. Um, I do a lot of like loosey goosey stuff uh, for the channel, obviously, because you know, I'm painting quicker, but I'll show you a piece that's a little, uh, quite a bit further along. This is kind of my natural style, and this painting I'm working on tonight is the style I'm working towards. This is an example of it. So some of you, I'm sure, have seen this before. So layer after layer after layer, building up detail, building up color intensity. Um, and so that's what I'm working towards here tonight. So just a lot of um, initial layers. A lot of them are soft, um, but you'll see me starting to go intense right off the bat in some of these areas, which I love. That's a rule that I love to break is bringing in intensity of color early on in a painting. Big fan. I cover, there's a whole section, a whole chapter in my new book about specifically about breaking that rule and why I think you should break it. Now friends, I am adding this buttery, this new buttery yellow here um, to my indigo, knowing that it's gonna obviously turn a little green and it's, um, it's lovely. It's doing exactly what I hoped it would do. This is a new pigment, so you know, I don't know exactly how it's always gonna act. Look at that, so good. Thank you, Penny. Yes. This particular cactus is incredibly, it's the green is so dark in areas. It's like one of those dark, shiny, and then it's got all the little dimples or I, I don't know the real names for some of these uh, plant anatomy parts. But I'm trying to create that intensity again, but without making it look dull. 
So therein lies my challenge. I'm gonna get some of this fluorescent orange. Oh yeah, I am. Oh yeah, so good. To be alive right now. I wanna say something right here. I want you to look right here in this weirdo area. Um, weirdo because it's I've got blue bleeding into fluorescent orange but you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that right now and I want to say just as much as you need you you need to anticipate and and prepare your mindset for the ugly parts of your painting the ugly um the ugly moments in your painting and I talk about this you're always going to paint some ugly there every painting has an ugly stage right well every painting also has a weird stage and you don't always, you shouldn't always feel compelled to kind of get out of the weird stage as quickly as possible. So am I going to leave that permanently? Yeah, no, probably not. I'm, I'm probably going to layer on top of it, but I don't have to layer on top of it right now, right? So like sit in your weird, sit in your ugly moments, just sit in them, meaning just let them happen, let them be, move away from them and go paint other areas because as you paint other areas you'll you'll be more informed about what you might want to do in the weirdo spots and in the ugly spots right does that make any sense gosh i hope that's making sense like in my head it's making sense Does anybody know when Broadway is coming back? I know that's a super random, or has it come back? I feel like I'm out of the loop. I've probably seen like 30 different shows in my life, which I know compared to some people is like nothing, but um, you know, I don't live near New York City. Um, and I just, I need to get my butt to see Hamilton. I really, and I know like everybody else in the world wants to see Hamilton after last year. Um, anybody know? Just stay. Oh, I can't go high tonight. That would be enough. That would be enough. Be enough. Yes, trusting the process can be incredibly difficult. Okay, sorry, I need to get back to some of these questions, y'all. Sorry. Okay, I'm not sure if you mentioned this before, but are you self-taught? Okay, this is a great question. I have not mentioned this before. I don't actually think we've talked about this. So, no. Um, in the beginning, I was. So, the story of my art beginnings is, and I hope this isn't too much information and more than you're asking for, but... Um, I started doing art, uh, watching like public television, like what is that, PBS, uh, watching Bob Ross, <laughs> which is too funny. Um, and my mom caught on. She was like buying me all the art supplies, buying me calligraphy sets because there was some lady on PBS that did calligraphy that I was obsessed with. But funny enough, I still can't do calligraphy. I'm really bad at it. Um, anyway, I started drawing cartoon strips my parents thought I was tracing them um like I guess they were like that accurate um and so at that stage you know I I guess I was self-taught self-taught um but my parents quickly I'm gonna get out of here because I'm having a love affair with this cactus but it's also getting a little overworked so I'm gonna move on and let that sit um and so they asked me if I wanted art lessons and I was like, yeah, 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 I do, I do. Like I was super excited about it. And uh, and then so I started taking art lessons with a local art teacher, her name is Sue Hand. And um, she's still in my life, I love her dearly. And uh, yeah, so then, you know, I took art lessons all throughout middle school and high school. And I was a rule breaker even back then, like, Sue would tell me, she's like, you're just going to do your own thing, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, pretty much. 
Um, and then I went to college for art education, but you know, in college I had to take all the, all the, um, the fundamentals. So figure drawing and oil painting and all the things. So, um, yeah, that is my, that's my history. Hmm. I'm not like loving what's happening here. I don't know why. I'm trying to figure it out. I feel, I think maybe we need some like stem color differentiation because jade stems are not green. Ooh, history as it's on you. So another cornerstone of my style is this um, lifting, constantly putting color down, and then with a clean brush, lifting it out, and um, kind of working color that way. Oh my gosh, Dana, watching you paint is my self-care for today. Thank you so much. You have no idea what that means to me. Okay, I want to talk about trusting the process because it's so true. Um, trusting this process is incredibly difficult. Um, this painting journey thing, friends, is all about mindset. You're training your, you know, you're you're learning to paint. You're training your hand. You're training your your eye eye hand coordination, hand eye cord. Wow, I said that backwards. Um, but at the same time, you are like having to contend with mindset every blessed day. And if you, you know, when you don't have that realization, when you are in this loop of like negative self-talk and you're just being hard on yourself, you don't realize what an impact the mindset piece has on your journey. Tremendous impact, okay. I am not at all loving that area. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go away from that area. Because um, the pair area I'm painting, when I just left that area, it was damp. Yeah. Yeah. When I went back into it initially, after I'd left this area, it was dry. Everything here is dry now. Yay. So I think my advice to any of you um, on this journey is try to create really good habits around your mindset, just as you're creating habits around your art creation, if that makes sense. Um, one of my, um, uh, I'm not sure when this video is going to publish on YouTube and thank you. Thank you to all of you who came to the, the um, relaunch this week. I did a live over on YouTube and I've officially relaunched the channel. So thank you for being there. Um, but one of the videos that I have recorded, it's um, off to the editor right now, is the title of it is Be Kind to Yourself. And I talk about establishing habits for good mindset on your painting journey. And I give you three tools, three mindset tools, um, and three ways to kind of um, establish really good mindset habits. So um, you definitely want to, I think, re uh, register. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel because you're gonna wanna watch that one when it comes out. I'm releasing, okay, I'm feeling better about this now. I'm releasing, um, new long form videos, so longer videos. They've been, um, so far they're all coming in um, at least 15 minutes. Um, there's a couple that are even longer coming up. And uh, yeah, every Tuesday, every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern, there's gonna be a new video. Turned up.
upside down The world turned upside down <sighs> Friends, this part is bothering me. See, I am not taking my own advice. Because see, I, and maybe this is good that this is happening while you're all watching. I just want to be in love with this area. I want to fix it so desperately. And I keep going back to it and it's it's not working. So I need, I'm gonna do one last thing and I am going to follow my own advice. I'm gonna drop in a good amount of water. I'm gonna let it sit, swirl it around a little. Mm-hmm. And lift it out and then I'm going to leave it be. If y'all see me go back to that, will you yell at me, please? <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to yell at you. But if you see me go back in there, call me out. Please, please. Starting to add more layers to this little guy here. People say they hate you. And lifting. Back to me. Da -da -da -da. Wow, I'm getting detailed there. using the cat's tongue friends in case you're wondering what brush I'm going at this with make it right for you going in with some indigo right over the bottom edge of that green I just added and I'm letting it bleed. The paper isn't super duper wet. I'm not getting at quite as much of a bleed as I wanted. So I'm gonna go add just a touch of water and then scoop up some of the water to just soften that, those edges and just encourage, look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Just encourage blending there between the two colors, that brighter green and then that indigo. <gasps> happy, happy, I'm happy. Okay, see what I did there? I literally called out like a crazy lady. I'm happy, I'm happy. Do you know why I do that? That's become a habit of mine. And this is what I'm talking about in this video that I, I mentioned not too long ago, my new video coming up on YouTube. You have to get in the habit of congratulating yourself, patting yourself on the back, exclaiming when something's going right. And I encourage you to take it even one step further. Don't just say it in your mind. No, say it out loud for all to hear. There's something very freeing about saying, congratulating yourself out loud. There's something um, very powerful and motivational, self-motivational about doing that. So will you do that for me? Next time you're painting, require yourself to 
shout it out. Shout out successful moments. Because we have no problem telling ourselves over and over again, out loud or otherwise, that we're screwing up when we paint, right? Am I right? It's so easy for us to tell ourselves we're screwing up. But why is it so hard? Why don't we have the, why isn't the opposite true? Why isn't it easy for us to tell ourselves we're doing a kick-ass job? Sorry, I cursed. But seriously, why is that hard? Why is that not instinctual like the negative crap is? I don't know. So right here and now, I'm encouraging you. Get in the habit. One of the things I mentioned in that YouTube video is to literally, and I know this sounds insane, but when you're establishing a new habit, you have to do some crazy things. To literally set a timer when you start painting for like every five minutes, whatever, whatever time you determine, set a timer and every time the timer goes off, you actively look for something that you are loving about your painting. I'm not kidding you. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's see. Sarah says, hello, I love your YouTube videos and just recently joined here. So excited to find you here soon. Well, I'm so excited you're here. I love that you found me on YouTube. It sounds like maybe you found me on YouTube first, which is coolio. Um, I love it. Welcome, welcome. I'm looking around. Oh, I'm going to do one of those philodendron, philodendron, what the heck are they called? Philodendrons? I've got one behind me. I feel like we need some of them. I'm literally turning around to try to figure out the creepy nature, creepy crawly nature of this fillet and fillet. I can't say the word. That's not really what, you know, it's funny. I don't actually use erasers a lot. So like when I want an eraser, it's kind of hard. Oh, crud. I don't like that eraser. Did you see what just happened? Holy horrible. See, this is why I don't use erasers because they make, they do weird things on your paper. All right. Well, I'm just going to have to ignore that that happened. You know what I'll maybe do is just put another leaf right over that beauty. And so that she doesn't haunt me, I'm gonna go right in and paint that one. These are little tricks, these are mindset tricks. Maybe I need to do a video on actual like painting, like mindset stuff that you can do with the way you paint, the process of your painting. Uh, let me explain that a little further. Okay, so. How many times have you been painting and you make a mistake and you're struggling to correct the mistake in a traditional way, right? And it kind of derails your whole thought process for that painting. So that just happened for me. I, I don't have an eraser in my near vicinity. I, I used a yucky eraser that really made a weird spot on my painting. So instead of letting it derail the whole experience for me, I went ahead and sketched another um, leaf right over top of the area in question and made the leaf super intense in terms of color. And I now no longer am like gonna obsess about the, the mistake I made with that bad eraser because it's gone, it's covered up and it's covered up with a leaf that I'm painting now that I'm actually happy with the first couple of strokes that I've placed, right? I love that. I love that if you just change the way you paint, how you paint, depending on the frustration or the hang up that's happening, you can change your whole mindset about the painting. I love it. 
Oh crap, I'm off the page. You can't see any of it. <laughs> okay. Dang it. A white pop, I, you know, I have Stedler erasers. I just d use them so little. I don't know where it is. I don't, is that, is that a white polymer? Is that Stedler? Cause I've been using those since I was like in high school and I love them. Um, but like I said, I don't use erasers a ton and it's not like, I'm like, I'm that good. I'm just very like, I'm very, I go very easy on myself when I'm sketching and I, I don't like to get in the habit of like erasing and erasing and erasing and erasing, trying to make my lines perfect because I find personally the eraser really affects the, um, the feel of the paper. It affects the surface of the paper. So I really try to avoid erasing and I try to like correct things, quote unquote, correct things with the paint, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm using the right eraser then. Yeah, I just happened to grab that one and that was a mistake. So anyway, I was painting off the page. I didn't realize. But yeah, I used this horrible eraser right around here. And instead of freaking out and instead of letting it derail my whole experience, I just covered it up. I literally just covered it up. And I will do this too. I will also sometimes, I'll sketch a little, but I won't like commit to sketching the whole painting because I don't know, I kind of like to paint in the way, in this way where things evolve, the sketch evolves, the composition evolves. I, I like a, a more of um instinctual approach. Yeah, gosh. Maybe I just have like a painting disorder. Maybe I'm just, I feel like I paint very differently than most people. <laughs> I don't know, but it works. It works for me and it keeps, keeps me, my stress level low. It keeps this painting experience joyful and beautiful. Mm, yes, I have a kneading eraser too. I have a couple of those swimming around here. Awesome. Um, I think somebody asked when I do these paint alongs, I don't have a set schedule. I've really, I've got two young kiddos. It's not an excuse, but we all have weirdo schedules and, um, it's, <laughs> excuse me, very hard for me to nail down times to do lives. I, I'm not a very traditional mom and bedtimes, like I don't have set bedtimes for my kiddos. I mean, they're young, they're not school age yet. And um, we're just a little more of a free spirit household. So it's hard for me to be like, yep, the kids are in bed at this time every night so I can do a live. Gosh, does that make sense? I sound like a wackadoodle. I know. <clears throat> I was raised this way. I didn't have curfews. Um, I didn't have a bedtime. Um, I don't know. It turned out okay. <laughs> fluorescent because why not I'm starting to get more of that organic nature of this philodendron, philodendron. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to stop trying to say it. I know it's fun, right? I love the way you drop those bright colors in the green. Try it, friends. 
put down some green. I feel like I'm going to do a video about uncommon color decisions and how freeing they can be because, oh my heavens to Betsy, when you start to get into like using color in a really unexpected way, that is when in my painting journey, because I only started doing that maybe about seven or eight years ago, my style has really evolved over the last um, decade. And when I started dropping in color bombs, oh, everything changed for me, my mindset, everything. Everything changed. And you know, it's not even like you have to be that painter and do that all the time. That doesn't have to become your style. But just knowing that that is available to you and that is an option in your painting can open up so many mental opportunities for you. So many. Yeah, I just splashed. So see what I'm doing there? I added pink first and now I'm going in with the green. That's another fun way to navigate your layer, your layering of color. So this, um, there's like a quote white in this palette. I'll show you. It's more, it's, I think it's their version of buff titanium, like from Daniel Smith. Um, and it creeps so beautifully. Maybe I'll zoom in here on this section. Bear with me for a second while I zoom. I'm going to zoom so you can really get a, a feel here for what I'm doing. Okay, beautiful. Zoomy zoom. I'm using the half inch dagger. Friends, if you're just hopping in, I am painting on Arches 600 GSM. And I'm using handmade watercolors by a brand called Case for Making. I feel like some pink. Yeah, that's nice. See what I did there? Oh yeah. That's nice. It can be as simple as that. Your personal affirmations as you're painting can be as simple as, oh yeah, that's nice. But when you get into a habit of congratulating yourself, mm, friends, everything changes. You don't have the votes. Um, Definitely will try it. Yes, please do. I have a hard time giving myself permission to play. Okay, I get that. <sighs> Sorry, I had like weird crummies on my page. So, play, Oh, You know, isn't it funny when we're kids, now I am 43, so full caveat there. So I am a geriatric millennial in some regards, in, in terms of some people's definition, some people I'm a, I'm not, I'm, I'm Gen, Gen X. Um, I act like a millennial. I, I mentally, I'm more of a millennial. Growing up, we were taught what in our coloring books? What were we supposed to do? We were supposed to stay inside the lines. So as kids, our concept of play was kind of shattered right right from the coloring book they're trying to take us down and then as adults somehow we're supposed to reverse all that and as adults we're supposed to like figure out how to be innovative in our careers and in our you know all the things we're supposed to kind of think outside the box so let me let me um paint a picture for you 
ha ha ha, no pun intended. But as kids, we're not supposed to color outside the lines, think outside the box. But as adults, we're supposed to color outside the lines, think outside the box. You feel me? You tracking with me? As my, as my pastor says, you tracking with me? He says that every Sunday. It's hysterical. I don't know where he gets it from. So, yes, we forget how to play. The best thing, the easiest way that you can get into play is to start to do watercolor exercises. So to sit down specifically, say to yourself, okay, the next time I quote, have time to paint, end quote, I am going to do this exercise. Now, that might not feel like play initially, but by doing art just for the sake of the joy of it, just for the sake of the actual art and not the end result, you're going to retrain your brain how to play. So in time, you're going to find yourself just naturally finding ways to experiment and play. Does that make sense? So again, it's kind of a bummer because we have to like learn a new habit. But once you learn it, 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 it kind of becomes second nature. So start to do some watercolor exercises. If you don't know what to do, I've got a bunch on this, on this feed or on my YouTube channel. And, and just start to incorporate watercolor exercises into your painting time. And in no time, you will start to play on your own naturally. I'll tell you what though, don't get hung up on the word habit. I use that word lightly, you know, just try new things. So I've been working on this leaf, adding, subtracting, adding, subtracting, and now I love what's happening. Some of the color has stained the paper in a beautiful way, and I'm loving it. So remember that, that you can literally, you know, play around with watercolor. That first couple of strokes that you make do not have to be where you land. Watercolor changes its nature as it dries, as it soaks into the paper. Some pigments stain the paper, and it's not until you push and pull and add and subtract that you know what you're going to love. Run away with us for the summer, let's go upstate. And always stay with our father. In a nearby park, you and I can go. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I can show you how to use the white. I'm going to do it right here. Um, I'm a big fan of using that white or any kind of buff, any kind of titanium, anything with titanium in the name. Um, it really shows off when you lay it into darker color. So I'm going to go that direction, get some nice heavy application of some indigo and some different greens here. This is like a fun teal. I'm just gonna have, I'm gonna do a red here. I'm gonna go cray cray. I'm gonna do a red. The question was, show us how to use that white. I'm on it. You ready? I'm just gonna paint part of it because I wanna see what happens when I give it room to creep. All right, I'm digging into this, well, I'll show you. I'm digging into this. I don't remember the name of it, but it's kind of like a shell or like a, an ivory. I'm really loading up the brush. All right, let's do this. Oh. Oh. 
chance to go on. Do you see that? That's freaking amazing. It's so good. Now I'm gonna rinse. I'm gonna bring over just a brush full of clean water and I'm gonna finish by just, yeah, it's a little too much on there. So I'm drying my brush, I'm gonna pull back. I don't want things to mix too much though. Going back in with the indigo to round out this beautiful leaf. It's so fun. It is so freaking fun. And this icy blue, I feel like might act the same way. I'm gonna dab some of that in. Yeah, that's good. Wow, that red dried fast. I need to get some green back in here. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm probably gonna do a little fluorescent little zhuzh of something over here and here. That white is like resisting the green. It's kind of funny. Yeah, there we go. Love that. <gasps> Love that mind blown. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. Watercolor in Hamilton, yeah. Let's do a little bit of line work. Um, I got my liner brush, the Remember Joy brush. Hope that's on screen. Yep, okay. Uh, let's go a little more understated. I don't have a philodendron leaf right in front of me, so I'm just going based on memory, kind of the nature of the, the variegation of the leaves. It's fun. I just hit my phone with my bun. My son used to sing last year. He was obsessed with Hamilton. Now he just tells me I'm embarrassing when I put Hamilton on, but I like to remind him that he used to sing it like, like a boss. I do have actual fluorescence. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is um, this whole palette I'm using tonight is a brand called Case for Making. Case for Making, like C A S E for Making. Um, 
pull out some of that green, get a little more transparent. Mm, where it happens. Mm, where it happens. doing a lot of blotting when I go off camera there with my brush a lot of blotting I don't do this often but feels merited right now and then I'm gonna just go over this with a sheer bit of this teal God, we just... I also love my fluorescence from my Jasper Stardust palette. Um, that's this one. He's on Etsy. Um, his pigments crumble a little bit more than I'd like, but I still like them enough to just deal with it. And he's got a really nice fluorescent set. Um, I have... I think almost all there's the this reddish one orange green there's a violet there's a fluorescent blue I might be missing one or two of them but all right some weirdness I want to show you how I would manage this there's some weirdness happening where the color bled so I'm gonna go in with just some clean water I'm gonna take care of this now because I don't want it to set in because look at that. That indigo is staining. I didn't know that because this is a new pigment. So um, I'm glad I'm going in when I'm going in because it's right there. It's stained. So that's going to be, that's not going to come out. That's not going to come out. So we're going to, we're going to work through it. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right, that's enough of working it out for now. It's not perfection. It's not exactly where I want it to be, but it is a good start and it but it is a start that needs to dry before I do anything else to it. It's Jasper Stardust. <laughs> Jasper Star, and I think it's J A Z P U R. Jasper Stardust on Etsy. I'm gonna flip the camera around, y'all, because I'm gonna wrap this up. <laughs> um, flip this around. Hi, and I'm gonna. I love doing this. I love holding this up so you can see it from a different viewpoint. But this is what we've been working on. I'm loving the start of some of this organic quality, how it's moving. I feel like <clears throat> compositionally, 
continue with that and just let it trail out to something tiny. Could be really pretty there. Um, I love these intense areas. And I'm gonna carry them like here and here and there's some happening here. I'm gonna, that's gonna be a visual thread through this whole composition. Um, I should probably just save this and come back on and do this more work on this live. That would be fun, right? To continue on one painting for a little while. Um, where do I get my dagger? So I have, um, I've designed a dagger. She's available on my site. I call it the Art for Joy Sake Dagger. She's my favorite. I designed this dagger uh, and had it manufactured last year in the fall. Um, after years of using a particular dagger that I fell in love with and liked, but I wanted to improve and make it more, more specific to me. So if you head to the link in profile and just uh, go to, or just go to christyrice.com, you can find it there. Now my brush set, which will include the dagger, it's actually gonna include two daggers. So this set, um, is going to be available on Amazon Prime sometime in August and pretty excited about it. Many of you already know about it, but brushes have little affirmations printed on them. So remember joy, this one, I always forget, happy painting because that's what I say all the time. This is the art for joy sake. This is the original. Um, this is the unshakable joy brush. Uh, and we have the forget rules brush because I say that all the time. And then the cat's tongue is the watercolor curious brush. Um, and then, of course, I haven't shown this in a while. It's gonna come in this little bag that says forget rules, forget right, remember joy. And I don't know if I told y'all, but um, you're gonna have access to an exclusive tutorial. So this is the card that the brushes are gonna be attached to. And there's a QR code on here. And when you scan that, thank you, Kathleen. When you scan that, it's going to take you to an unlisted YouTube video just for the Art for Joy Sake brush owners. And I'm going to teach you how to use each brush and then how um, to bring them all together with a painting. So I'm excited about that. All right, friends, this was a blast. Um, Definitely head to artforjoysake.com. That's one S that's going to take you to like my link tree thing with a bunch of links. If you want to sign up for my YouTube or um, sign up for my email list so you know when that brush set is going to launch. Because like I said, I don't really know um, the exact date. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. New videos there every Tuesday. And then I do republish these lives every week. I publish a new one. So you can go there and watch the live again if you want to paint along and that way you can pause and fast forward and rewind. It's really awesome. And I also publish some, publish some short videos over there. And then of course, Instagram, uh, Christy the Painter on Instagram. A lot of the content on Instagram is the same as here, but I do post um, some fresh stuff over there. So, all right. Thanks so much, friends. This was such a blast. I'm still gonna work on coming up with a, at least one day a week where I come on a little bit more predictably. So bear with me as I work on that. Um, but this is a blast. Thank you for being here. I know this is the start of a holiday weekend for us in the US. So um, I know you got better things to do. So I am honored that you're here. All right, have a wonderful rest of your evening. Get some rest and I'll see you next time. Bye. Happy painting. Must be nice.